Joe here, your reliability man, bridging the gap between best practices and the reality that you live every day. Uh, bringing to life my life and times as a plant manager so you can learn from my experiences. Today's topic, how do plant managers set the maintenance budget? This comes from a question. And again, I'm gonna start with a story. Does anyone, raise your hand, raise your hand, does anyone have a family member that makes really good money, say it's $100,000 a year US, but continues to make bad decisions with their money? They buy a boat, they buy a truck, they buy a camper, they buy a timeshare, they max out their credit cards, they're sending their kids to camps that they can't afford. They continue to spend money, but yet want sympathy for their situation and they end up with severe financial trouble. Uh, does anyone have, have that? Uh, and behind their back, people make judgments about them on their ability to make decisions. If you don't have that in your family, got some bad news. Good chance it's you. Okay, income is not the problem. It's spending. So, on to our question. We need to spend more money on maintenance. Reliability costs money. You see that a lot. You see that, you know, on uh, LinkedIn. You see that on in... Uh, ma trade magazines, you hear that it shows, so we need to spend more money on maintenance. Is spending really the right answer? It's partially correct. I've been, worked with some organizations where the margin on their product, their good product, was so high, so, uh, you know, say it's 50% margin, uh, that it made sense to spend money on reliability. Um, however, uh, as a general rule, 90% of the time, that is just not the case. The problem is not the size of the maintenance budget. It's where the money is wasted. You know, uh, it can be, you know, it can be used in other places differently. That's what I've seen at least 90% of the time. It's how the money is used. You know, so ex some examples of that, uh, four of them, quick ones. Uh, canceling a $300,000 rebuild because we don't have the money uh, on a spent anode impactor. It's kind of a crushing device. These are real examples, by the way. Uh, while having 15% wrench time. So you got 15% wrench time on 100 crafts, uh, but you, uh, so you don't have enough money to spend on this impactor. You know, if you can get to 30% wrench time, which doesn't take a lot of effort, just some knowledge, but doesn't take a lot of effort, you can fully fund this uh, expenditure plus fund a, an internal condition monitoring team, plus plan, uh, add a couple planners, plus add one or two reliability engineers if you can only get your wrench time between 15 to, from 15 to 30. Example number two, and this is related on that same impactor. I think it was called a Williams impactor. Uh, we had uh, something with, called a broken rod detector. Instead of sending a hard block of carbon through this impactor, occasionally we'd send a big old block of cast iron. Well, that detector, the reliability of that, that detector was a big deal. So it affected mean time between failure. Uh, mean time between failure. It determined that how many times you sent one of these cast irons through there. So why don't you get that thing running and save on this $300,000? That's example number two. Example number three, not lubricating motors. Big deal at my plant. Using precision maintenance, using UE, uh, uh, ultrasonic um, uh, lubrication. You know, 80% of our motors failed because of a lubrication issue. 80%. We had a $5 million spend. That means we could save $4 million by doing precision maintenance. Now, hey, now there's other root causes in, inside the uh, uh, investigations. Say we only got 25% of the real failures were from lubrication. That's still a million bucks. That's still a million bucks. So think about, you know, we were looking for 300,000 in this particular example. So uh, and then example number four, 50% uh, of our PMs are not based on failure mode. When was the last time you did a PM optimization and linked that equipment maintenance plan to the failure mode? You know, um, so just huge opportunities inside of waste. There were four of them then. You know, for me, the problem is not the quantity of dollars, it's where you're spending the money. And in a word, it's waste. Dollars are the easy button. So, Back to the question, how do plant managers set the maintenance budget? 
Well, usually the first proposal comes in, the, the managers, uh, the maintenance manager will assume the status quo and then look for one-offs, one-time one spending items that are additional in the coming year. Uh, that's typically what I, what I would see. You know, the correct method, uh, and, and this is a general rule, I'm looking for a three to five percent cut. And that includes inflation. That includes offsetting inflation, three to five percent cut. So, uh, you know, you need to realize somewhere between five and eight percent. And that shows that you got your eyes open to this waste. You know, there is usually some dis discussion of one offs, like if you have a two million dollar rebuild that happens once every 10 years and happens to be next year. OK, you could put something like that in. But generally those wash out. There were one or two this year. There's one or two next year. You know, you can't do this every year, you know, so that's that's the first argument I'll hear in the comments. You can't do this every year. Well, if you're at 50% wrench time, 10% unplanned work, 50% of your work comes from condition monitoring, and you got a robust problem solving organization, basically you have a culture of reliability, hey, um, you don't have to cut 5% every year. You know, for the rest of us, uh, that's really the goal. Uh, you know, one area that's often debated, debated, sorry, uh, I hear is about training. You know, uh, there's a lot of great training out there that you can pay to send people to or even to get online. Great training in reliability and maintenance space. But here's an alternative. Uh, and maybe this isn't for all the training, but maybe it's, a, you know, it's 80%. Why not, and I'm going to have a separate video on this. Uh, why not cr conduct your training in-house? Take your maintenance resources, take your engineering resources, and even your production resources, and divide up uh, your your topics your, and into subject matter experts. Maybe it's problem solving, maybe it's planning and scheduling, maybe it's kidding. Um, you have all those different topics, and you can, can create your own SPAs, have them learn online, and then they have, they set up lunch and learns or, or learning sessions after work where everybody becomes an expert in one facet of reliability. You got that internal. Um, you can certify them as not trained, you know, so you're, you're, uh, I had that a color code of red. You can certify them as, hey, they've attended the training, that's yellow. Uh, proficient means you, that's green, you, means you can, you've demonstrated to the instructor three times that you've uh, used the training that you had. And the, the last um, uh, classification is instructor, you rate them purple. Those are people that can put on the training or uh, can assist the trainer in putting it on. So you can have performance objectives to attain these levels of training. There's secondary benefits of this too. Not only do you have the training in-house, but you also force the SPAs to get better. It's not somebody else training me. You have internal experts and everybody has an instant network of people. You grow your network. So that's an opportunity to, to cut your training budget uh, from using all external. So your topic challenge and your task for next week, what have you done this week, let's say in the last uh, three days, what have you done in the last three days to look for waste in your organization? Are you, you know, are you uh, uh, throwing money at a cultural problem? It takes a very mature person to look at their own organization, to look at their own expenses and say, we can do better on things like our problem solving, our root cause investigations, our wrench time. Um, it takes a mature person to do that to say that we have waste. I think a lot of organizations, and I'd say 90% of them, so let's say 9 out of 10 people listen to this, they're throwing money at a cultural problem. Just like the example where I talked about the family member uh, not being able to live on $100,000 US a year. It's not an income problem, it's an expense control problem. Guys, we need to be better than this. So when I look for a maintenance budget, I look for somebody that understands that they have waste and opportunity in their organization, and that's demonstrated by a number that's at least three to 5% below what they're currently running. Begin your journey, folks. This stuff isn't that hard. Get pointers from me, send me questions, reach out to me. This is my 33rd video. There's a lot of content here that should help you. If you need an experienced guide, you got my email, send me a note. Thank you. Have a good day.